I got sent a couple of questions from somebody today. Um, he's, he's already brought in his own experiences and he wanted me to sort of cover the topic. One of the, the first one being related to um, how do you know that you've been, well, you've been taken for a mug um, with a partner in the Philippines. In his experience, basically he had his partner's sister permanently at the house, living, eating, whatever. And then when he wasn't there, like back in the UK or whatever, she also had her husband, boyfriend, living in the house. And then you find a lot of the kids in the neighborhood were eating in the house. Um, you have to understand that when people turn around and tell you that you have to accept their culture, you turn around and say, no, you have to accept mine. This is my house. I pay the bills, I pay the rent, whatever. Uh, as such, this is not your jurisdiction to dictate to me what evidence should be. Um, and quite simply, don't accept it. Because if you do, it's a constant hurdle. You're being pushed further and further back. You know, you'll, you'll find that you start off with kids eating in the house, doing this, whatever, at your expense. And then like there, you've got the sister moving in, then the boyfriend of the sister moving in. And then you've probably got other money disappearing left, right, and center. Oh, the a child was sick. My parents need some cash, blah, blah, blah. You become a... You become an ATM, which is often a phrase people use. And I would simply say, just don't get into it. Um, I mean, it's a little bit different with myself because with my in-laws, they actually work for their own money anyway. So it's not a case of they're um, not earning it. Um, they actually have their, like, for example, my mother-in-law looks after the apartment. So at the end of the day, all of her bills are paid, etc. And we keep surplus for medical emergencies, etc. But at the same time, it's not people sitting around my house, basically just draining things and not putting any input. So with my father-in-law used to do some of the stuff related to another venture we had. The, this is the difference. You, you've you got people that are simply just being parasitical, which are coming in, eating food, doing this, doing that. And they're, not only are they doing nothing for it, they'll keep pushing until they can see how far you'll go. Um, where in my side, it's like the internet calf, my sister-in-law was running it. The... I generate some cash revenue for myself, so I get ROI, but also they're interested in actually making some money in the first place, and it becomes beneficial to everybody. They're two very different things, and that's one of the things I would say is even if you put a few thousand pesos into a small investment, you can utilize it even if it's a lot. You gotta lose that money. For example, if you've got people that say, oh, well, we haven't got enough money to do our own business or whatever, you say, okay, well, what do you want to do? And they'll say, oh, the X, Y, Z. Now, if it's successful, it's good for you. They're no longer your problem because you, you made them successful. If they're a failure, it's good for you because you turn around and said, look, I, let, I gave you a head start. I gave you some money. You haven't paid it back. You have, your business was a failure. Nothing to do with me. You're not my problem anymore. And you can offload it that way as well. And that's how I do recommend dealing with this sort of stuff is be be very um, uh, what would be the word very specific. You know, at the end of the day, when you say, "I'll well, I'm not going to lend you this money. I'll I'll give you the money," based on the fact that you you must use it for this business, and then you must do this and. You can pay me it back once the business is successful, you know, in a year's time or whatever. And then the act, that's outlined. Because then it's not really a loan. It's basically, they've got to make the business work in the first place. But B, you're not really expecting the money back. If you do get it back, it's it's good. But if it, if it doesn't come back, you, you've offloaded that burden anyway. You've got rid of people that say, well, I haven't got enough money for this. I went, no, no problem. I gave you the opportunity. You, you blew it. You're not my relative. Um, but even my, I mean, my own brothers and stuff, um, if they actually had a solid venture, I'll quite happily get involved. But at the same time, 
I would be very hands-on and making sure it works in the first place. Very difficult to do that in the Philippines for a lot of people um, because it's a bit like a friend of mine does organic farming. As soon as he turns his back, the farmers go back to the way they've been doing it for the last 20 years. In the same way I've had it with construction, which is why we got through so many builders, is they will go back to the method that they knew and, and have always done and too lazy to upgrade their skills. And I do say too lazy because a lot of time it's just reading the bloody labels on the packet. Um, for example, doing the screed and the concrete and the floors, they'll, they'll stick about one half, thin, one half inch thick piece of concrete on the floor for tiling. And I remember the the guy who was doing it before telling me that we, they don't have a tile adhesive. And then I brought back to it there and says, there it is. Because he hadn't even bothered looking, couldn't care less. It's not his money. But ultimately, instead of um, just putting a latex leveling on there, leveling compound, then just putting a small screed of um, tile adhesive, which it's going to have more benefits, it's, it's not porous, etc, etc. Um, they just want to do it their own way. It doesn't matter, it's your money, it's not theirs, but there is no interest in doing what you tell them. Just get rid of them. Um, sooner or later, you'll get people that actually listen and they're going to be a much higher standard anyway. Um, but yeah, ultimately, You've got to understand a lot of these things are not your problem, so don't make them your problem. Get rid of them. And a lot of it can be very diplomatic and in a way where they will never bother you again anyway, because like that, if you gave them 5,000 pesos to set up some small venture somewhere, 5,000 is not a lot of money, I know, but in the Philippines, it's very likely it's going to get misspent if they're already like that. And then any time somebody comes and asks you for the same, for whatever, I said, no, I gave such and such it, and I, they never pay me back, whatever, I don't do it anymore. That's it. Job done. You can use them as an excuse for everybody. And that gets you, that's your get out of jail free for 5,000 pesos. Um, no.